So, so Benjamin has worked in mangrove and seagrass habitats um, before, as he describes it, jumping sideways into a remote sensing master's degree um, at the University of Würzburg. So he's currently doing his doctorate at DLR, so another German aerospace center. And I'm guessing he already knows um, our uh, first speaker. Um, I'd be surprised if they don't. So um, over to you, uh, Benjamin. Thank you, Stephen. So can you see my screen? Hello. Uh, OK, never mind. So, um, Wait, so thank you very much, Stephen, for the um, introduction. Uh, I'm Benjamin, and I'm, as well as uh, Stephen said, I'm part of the uh, same team as Demos under the Global Seagrass Watch. So today I'd like to share with you a very simple method that I've developed for masking uh, deep water, uh, optically deep water, which will help improve seagrass mapping as well as other coastal remote sensing uh, uh, coastal um, habitats. So seagrasses are, are coastal uh, habitats, and as Demo shared, they have many important um, ecosystem services, one of which is blue carbon uh, sequestration. But if you want to know how much blue carbon a seagrass has, you need to know how many seagrasses are there. And that's where seagrass mapping comes into play. When it comes to seagrass mapping, um, it it's pretty, sounds pretty straightforward. Get an image, pre-process it, get training data, uh, put in a model, and um, run the classification. So what could go wrong? Apparently, Murphy's Law. When it comes to uh, seagrass uh, mapping, uh, as you can see in the image, the green areas are the seagrass areas. There is an overprediction in seagrass areas, um, especially in the what we call optically deep waters, or waters, uh, or in short, it's so deep that you cannot see the seabed. And if you can't see the seabed, like an optically shallow water, then you wouldn't be able to detect seagrass, right? So when it comes to this image, uh, there are many um, there are many ways to solve this prediction problem. One of which is to simply mask away the optically deep water. Uh, which, which is what I've done here. And, you have, and right now we have a map that has a very reasonable prediction of seagrasses. So for our, as humans, we can see in the first image on the left, uh, the optically deep water as well as the seagrass areas. And we wonder why is it that the machine is not able to pick it up? So the difference lies in the fact that machine vision and human vision are technically different. So when it comes to machine vision, they, uh, they see what our eye sees, uh, which is the RGB space or a multi-dimensional space where each, um, each sensor or is like a cone in the human eyes and, um, it's a, and uh, you do it in a multi-dimensional uh, um, yeah, clustering. But when it comes to humans, uh, they take the three uh, band colors that we, that we see and they convert it in a way such that we see uh, vision in a different way and not in the multi-dimensional manner. And scientists have found a way to try to emulate how humans have, they see by having this, uh, what's known as a HSB color space, uh, where they use hue or color, value, brightness, or saturation, which is the purity of the color, to emulate how uh, humans see. Fortunately, there's a mathematical formula that could translate a three-banded RGB back into human vision, uh, the HSB, which is what humans see from the brain. And the computer can kind of consider how humans see through this method. But when it comes to RGB, since it's mathematical, you do not always need to put true color combination into it. You are free to choose three different bands or false color in order to apply this formula. And since we are already choosing three bands, why not the three bands uh, which have the best penetration to water column, B1, B2, B3 in Sentinel-2? And if you combine all these together, you get the topic today, which is whether a false color HSV is it able to detect optically deep waters. So we start off with a Sentinel-2 single image. Doesn't matter whether it's level one or level two, it's fine. And then we do the, the usual pre-processing and all the transformation to get our false color HSV. So for comparison purposes, we will also do a band ratio image, which is to take one band and divide by the other band. And with all these different images, we, uh, we start to use them individually to see whether which can produce the best uh, binary map of optically deep and shallow waters using a single value thresholding, like you do a threshold or NDVI or NDWI and so on. And then you, we do a, an accuracy assessment. So from what we see from the results here, uh, we have four sites with four different environmental conditions. Um, this is uh, based on ranking of the best uh, 
uh, results and the top eight best results, you can see that band ratios actually um, are, are the best results. For example, B1, B2 in Bahamas and B2, B3 in Caspian Sea. Caspian sea. But the problem is that for this band ratios, they are not consistent. B1, B2 fares really badly in Caspian Sea. B2, B3 is not as good in Bahamas and so on and so forth. Uh, of this, saturation on the uh, is consistently one of the best, um, uh, um, they produce one of the best uh, optically deep water output. And it's definite, and if you are going in blind, uh, saturation is going to give you a better result than if you try to guess the band ratio. Similarly, for level two product, um, is the HFG band again, the same problem, uh, but the difference is that hue is the one that is better off. So if you look at the map here, this is a map of Tanzania. You have the, uh, you can see the, uh, uh, the sun gleam, that's the cloud cover, but you can make up which is optically deep and optically shallow. So when it comes to it, the best, uh, uh, the best products, the best optical deep and shallow products are those from hue and B1, B3 uh, product as we have uh, shared earlier. So uh, for those of you who are sharper eyed, you can see that there are still noise in here. And these are things that we are currently still developing in the process. And we would like to be able to solve this to make a better optically deep and shallow product. So to wrap things up, uh, we are proposing to use a false color HSV uh, product, saturation for level one, hue for level two, to be able to uh, produce a good deep water mask that will help uh, improve our seagrass classification as well as other coastal habitat mapping. And thank you very much for your attention. Any questions, please feel free to email me. Thank you, Benjamin. Okay, our next lightning talk